Hey everybody, in this video we're going to be showing you how to paint a Death Guard Plague Marine for Warhammer 40,000 by Games Workshop, and we're going to be painting it in the colour scheme of the Pallid Hand. Now this particular colour scheme is bone white armour with some green details and brass trim, which means it's also the same as the colour scheme of the Death Guard before the Horus Heresy. So if you're looking to paint a Horus Heresy army then this video is going to be useful to you, but of course if you want to learn how to do really disgusting slime and gross things, this video is going to be great for you as well. We hope you enjoy it, we'll see you at the desk. paint a Plague Marine in the colour scheme of the Pallid Hand, the first thing that you need to do is to undercoat your miniature with a very light colour, something kind of an off-white, and it doesn't matter specifically what colour you use because we are going to be painting entirely over it, but it just means the first base coat is going to apply much easier and much quicker and get a smoother result. So the colour I've used is Wraithbone from Citadel, but as I said you can use any kind of white colour that you want, and the first thing that you need to do is paint over it entirely using Screaming Skull. So I've got that now and I'm going to be applying it using a large brush. I've actually got a large dry brush here from the Army Painter, which is just good and really nice for base coating large areas very quickly. You don't have to worry about being neat at all in these early stages, but what you do need to do is make sure that as ever you've got some paint on your palette that's thinned down with a touch of water. So there we go, kind of behaving like that, so it's nice and smooth. And once you've done so, all you've got to do is paint this entirely over the miniature. And be sure to cover everything and work it into all the nooks and crannies as you go. Once you've got an even application of that colour across the whole miniature, you're ready to move on to the next step, which is to do some shading on that armour, and to give it a really kind of horrible sort of aged bone, almost a rotting appearance, Sarah from Sepia is the perfect colour to use it, because it's going to give it a slightly yellow tone. Now to apply it, what you need to do is go for a smaller brush that has a fine point on it to allow you to paint this directly into recesses. To do it, I'm going to use a small layer brush from Citadel, but really it's your choice entirely what you use here. But it is a good idea to use a regular palette, just building up a little puddle like this and draw the paint from there, because it's much easier to control now how much paint is on your brush, because it's very easy to overdo this. I like to get rid of the excess off on some tissue like that and just draw up a small amount at once, and this way I get a fine tip on the brush so I can control where it's going to go. And with this, what we're looking to do is to paint it directly into the recesses of all this bone armour, and the back of the legs is a great example here for the Mark III power armour. What you do is just paint it directly into corners like that, stain it yellow, and to give that shading. And it's really just a case of doing this all the way around the bone armour. Now when you're painting a miniature like this that's got so much going on on it with all the tentacles and things, it can get a bit confusing as to what the armour is and what it isn't. So a little trick I like to do at this stage is when I encounter details that are going to be different colours, so for example something like the trim and the shoulder plates, rather than just doing a recessed shade into those little corners, I'll actually paint it entirely over the bit that's going to be a different colour, because it's a nice little sort of key marker that lets me see how the miniature's developing, and I can see what it's going to look like to start filling in other colours. So you don't have to do that if you don't want to. I just find it's really useful on the armour especially. Now when you're doing this it's just about inevitable that mistakes will happen, so for example if I'm doing around the front of the leg just here, you'll be like painting into this sort of area and you might splodge onto the armour like that. Now if that happens don't worry, quickly wash your brush, just make sure it's damp and then just use it to move away the excess. Now it's likely you'll still get a little bit of staining on there, like it's almost like a little coffee stain, but don't worry about that because it makes it very easy to clean that up later on, and we'll come back to that in a moment and show you how to fix that. Once that wash is dry, to fix up any little mistakes, all you need to do is return to Screaming Skull. So we're going to do that on the leg, and you can see it's given that almost sort of coffee stain kind of appearance there. All you do is apply some Screaming Skull over it like that, and there you go, fixed up, no problem. And with that stage done, you can see the model has really transformed, and we can now see all the different details we need to fill in, and also we've got a nice finish to that armour, and we're going to return to it later on to highlight it, but now what we need to do is to start base coating it other colours on the miniature. Now the first thing we're going to look at doing is all the trim on the armour, for which we need a brass colour, and Balthasar Gold is a great choice, and to apply this, go for a medium sized brush. I'm going to use a regiment brush from the Army Painter, because it's a good size for the area we're covering, and it holds a good point too, so it's good for the finer detail. And with this, all you've got to do is get some on your palette, I was ever thinning it down with that touch of water, and then just testing out the palette to see how it's behaving. You need it to be flowing smoothly from the brush to give you maximum accuracy when you start to pick out these details. And well, let's test it until it's kind of behaving like it's doing just here. And with this, all you've got to do now is start looking for any details that you want to be brass, which is largely going to be the trim, such as on the shoulder plates, but also look for things such as skulls and sensors, or stuff like that. For example, the one in the middle of this shoulder plate just here.
Once you finish picking out all of that trim, we can then move on to another colour for the armour plating, which is actually that kind of olive green that you get on the shoulder plates for the Death Guard. And that appears on this particular colour scheme too. And for this, Castellan Green is the perfect colour. Now, once you've done that, we've just got a few more base coats to do. And to begin with, what we need is some lead belcher for all the silver details, followed by Corvus Black, which is going to be for the black details. And then finally, we've got some leather to do. For this, we need some dried bark. But first of all, it's time to apply that Castellan Green. And for this, I'm once again going to use that regiment brush. And all we've got to do is use this to pick out the shoulder plates. But bear in mind, with Chaos Troops, there's not really any strict uniform, so you don't have to do the shoulders if you don't want to. And in fact, you can even paint some other armor details green as you like and just mix it up randomly across your army. But whatever parts you do want to paint with this green, just make sure your paint's ready and that is under control with a fine tip on your brush. And all you've got to do is start blocking out the areas that you want to be green. And like I said, I'm going to do the insides of the shoulder plates. So I'm looking around here. It's just a matter of being neat when getting close to that brass. But if you do make any mistakes, just neaten it with the brass before you continue. With that done, we can now move on to the silver details using lead belcher. And these are scattered all across the miniature, but of course are going to be on the weapons for which we're looking at the mechanical parts and things such as the barrel, and such as just around here. But also keep an eye out for cables, pipes, chain mail, all that kind of thing, anything that you want to be silver. Once you've got all that silver, you can see the models really starting to come together, but there's still a few more base coats to do. First of all, what we need is some Corvus Black for the black details, and this is going to involve things such as the casing of the weapons and any joints in the armour as well. Now, a Mark III power armour, you generally can't see very many of the joints, but there are a few there, so don't miss them. For example, on this one, we've got one just at the very back, just there. And you can also pick out some cables with this colour too. Now, one of the things you should look for on your Plague Marines that isn't actually on this model is any horns. Be sure to paint them with this colour at this time as well. And finally, using dried bark, pick out any leather on the miniature. For example, this strap on the bolter around here. And just be careful when you get close to the details, just take your time, but remember it's easy to neaten up should you need to. Now in addition, this is a great colour for any hair, which sounds kind of weird for these miniatures, but on this one, you can see on this grenade at the back, there's actually a shrunken head, and so we need to paint the hair for that as well. So be sure to get that detail at this stage as well. With all those base coats now applied, we're ready to move on to adding a second wash onto the miniature. And this time what we need is a dark brown for all these new colours that we've added to it. And what it's going to do is give them a kind of oily, grimy feel, so perfect for Plague Marines. The colour I'm going to use is Agrax Urshade, and to apply it, I'm still going to use that Regiment brush, because with this, what we want to do is to paint it over these new colours we've added since the Bone Armour, but not actually over the Bone Armour colour itself. So to help out with doing that, use the palette to get some of the paint on there and draw from that, because this way, it's much easier to control exactly how much you got on your brush, and that way it won't run out of control. So draw from there, and then all you got to do is start painting over these newer colours. So we're looking at things such as the trim, or the silver, or the black details, the brown, all those parts. So just neatly paint over them like this. Once that wash is completely dry, you can see it gives much more definition to those colours. But it has dulled things down quite a lot, which for Nurgle is fine, but for that green, because it's such a large part of the colour scheme of the miniature, I'm just going to brighten that up a little bit. So what we're going to do is return to Castellan Green to layer it. And to do this, I'm still going to be using that Regiment brush, and we really don't need very much here. What we're looking to do is just to apply a small amount of this onto the flat of that armour panel, but not going quite into the corners this time. So we want to keep that definition from the wash. So once you've got your paint ready, this time as you're applying it, what you need to do is just, well, as I said, just apply it to the flat areas, such as on this shoulder plate just here. What I'm going to do is just paint it onto areas like that, but not go quite into that corner where it meets the brass, because this way we retain that definition. And with that layer done, the model is now really coming together. And in fact, if you wanted to, you could leave all these details here and just skip ahead in this video to paint all the flesh and the really gross bits in the miniature. But if you want to make it stand out a little bit more on the tabletop, then what you need to do is to highlight these details. And that's what we're going to start doing now. And to begin with, we need to highlight that bone white armour. And for this, what you need is a pure white. So I'm going to use some matte white from the Army Painter for that. After that, we need to highlight all the bronze trim. And for this, Cycorax bronze is a perfect colour. And then we're going to move on to that green detail. And for this, what we need is some Lauren Forest. But first of all, I'm going to use some matte white, and to apply it, I've actually got a small layer brush from Citadel. And to do this, what we're going to do is just apply this colour to the sharpest edges and the rivets that are on that bone white armour detail. Now, to do that, the real trick is to make sure the paint's thinned down correctly on your palette. So you can see you've already got a little dollop of it just there. I was drawing it out, it's quite thick straight out the bottle there, so I'm just going to add a bit more water to it to thin it down. And the water goes next to it like that, because this way, you can go back and forth between the two to bring it to the consistency that you want. And what I'm looking for is to get it to a point where it flows really easily from the brush. And you can test that on the palette as well. 
To do that, what you do is just get off excess off on some tissue there like that, load up a little bit, and just see how far you can go by painting some lines in the palette. Just start having a go like that. And if it applies easily to the palette and just keeps on going, then you know you've got it thinned down to the right sort of amount. And this is going pretty well, so I'm quite happy with that. So I think that consistency is pretty good. So I'm just going to load up fresh with a small amount. There we go, just make sure I've got a good tip on the brush. And using this, what we need to do is now look for all the sharp edges on the armour. And the good thing about Mark III Power Armour is that it's actually very well defined. You can see these edges such as around the leg just there. All you do is angle your brush, say you're approaching it side on, and just skim it using the side of the brush like that to catch that edge. And you see this way I get a highlight appearing on those details very quickly and very easily. And the real trick to doing this right is to turn the model so it's always comfortable to approach it. And that might mean sometimes turning it right around like that so you can approach these edges like that. And even though I'm close to the tip of the brush, you see I'm actually using the edge. I'm just kind of skimming along a little bit like that, then moving to there, and just work my way around like that. So now it's just a matter of going all the way around the white armour, looking for these details, and also picking out any rivets as you go. With that white highlight now applied, you can see it just really helps define the shape of all those armour plates. And now we can move on to the bronze details using Cycorax bronze for much the same thing. And once again, just use the side of your brush to skim along the edges of these details and just turn the model as you need to, so that you're comfortable approaching these areas like this. And finally, we just need a small amount of Lauren Forest to highlight any of the green. Now you won't always need to do this, but we're just looking for things like cracks in the armour, such as just around here, just very gently picking out the edges, just like this. And with those highlights applied, you can see the model's really starting to pop now, and well, we've just got a few more colours that we need to highlight on it, so we're going to do those now. First of all, what we need is some Eschen Grey to highlight the black details, and then some Stormhost Silver for all that silver metal. After that, we'll need some Gawthor Brown to highlight all the leather details and the hair on that shrunken head, and then speaking of that shrunken head, we need some Screaming Skull for that. But first of all, what we need is some Eschen Grey, and to apply it, I'm still going to use that small layer brush, because this technique is very much like what we've been doing so far. So you a small amount of this, just checking to make sure it flows well from your brush, and then using this, we just need to start highlighting the black details. And once again, it's just a matter of using the side of your brush and just turning the model as you need to so it feels comfortable, just to catch those edges, for example, on the bolter just here. Next, we're ready for all the silver details, and for this, what we need is some Stormhost Silver, again, looking for those edges and just gently skimming along them to get a nice highlight like this. Now, there's also another texture on this stage to look out for, and that is Chainmail. When you get to these details, just make sure you don't have much paint on your brush, and just very gently just start running down some of the links like that. So you don't have to catch all of them, just a few so they catch the light. It's almost like dry brushing, but you see this way you get a very nice highlight on them very quickly and easily. Next up, we're ready to highlight the leather using some Gawthor Brown. Now, some of this will be very easy to access, such as this strap on the bolter just here, but there's also these bindings around it. And for ones like that, you can see it's not quite standing out enough for you us to use the side of the brush. So in this case, what you need to do is use the tip, and to do so, just angle it so you're painting downwards and towards yourself like this. It's a very natural motion, gives you lots of control over where the highlight's going. Also, at this stage, if the model has any hair, be sure to highlight that too. And finally, we need to return to Screaming Skull, and this is actually going to be for the shrunken head we've got around here, just to paint the main part of it, the flesh of it, so around here, applied as a layer this time, so just look to avoid the deepest recessed areas and just skip those and apply onto the flatter parts there like that. Now in addition, there's one other thing to do at this stage, and that's just to get a very small amount of this colour, and on the eye lens that we've got just here, just apply a small amount into the middle of it, so just going along here. I know the direction I'm painting it on, I'm going along the length of the eye and it makes it much easier to access it. And this is to set that up for the next step. And there we are, with all those details now highlighted, we can move on to painting one of the smaller details, and that is the eye lenses. And for this, what we need to do is to tint it red to make it look kind of like the colour of blood, so really appropriate for the Death Guard. And to do this, what you need is a red wash. Now, the one I'm going to use is Red Tone from the Army Painter, but if you want to stick to Citadel, then Caraburg Crimson is the colour to use here. And to apply it, what you need is a brush with a really fine point on it. And I've actually got a detail brush from the Army Painter for just that purpose, just here. And all you got to do is just get some of this on the brush, so just load it up there like that, just checking to make sure there's not loads on there so it doesn't run out of control. And once you've got some ready, all you've got to do is run it into the recess of the eye lens. And the best way to approach this is going from the side, so kind of this direction like this, just hold it so you're going along the length of the eye and just gently introduce it into the recess, just to tint it red, 
gently like that. Now the first coat you can see is not entirely strong, so what I'm going to do is just let that dry and apply a second coat in the exact same way, just to build it up so that the colour gets a little bit more intense and a bit more red there like that. And with that, the eye lenses are done, and now we're going to move on to one of the distinctive part about painting Nurgle miniatures, and that is to do the really gross flesh. And for this miniature, what we're going to do is use a technique that uses some contrast paints to get a nice random kind of feel and colour variation across these details. Now to do this, first of all, we need to set it up by applying some base coats to it. And for this, what we need is Kislev flesh for the majority of it, and then we're going to pick out some pustules using some Avalan Sunset. So first we need Kislev flesh, and to apply this I've returned to my regiment brush, and all I've got to do is block out these areas. And it's worth noting that with Death Guard miniatures, this is going to vary a lot from model to model, because there's a huge amount of variety with all different sculpts of these miniatures. In our case, there's some quite large areas, but look carefully around your miniature to make sure you catch them all. So in our case, what we've got is this big one on the belly, which is the most obvious, so this entire area here needs to be blocked out using Gizlo flesh. But also you can see there's kind of a tentacle coming out of his face, which we need to get as well, so that's this part just here. And also we're looking for any smaller details, such as this little pipe that we've got around here. Once you've found all of that flesh, you're then ready to pick out any pustules that happen to be on them using some Avalan Sunset. For example, these ones we've got on the belly around about here. With those base coats established, we can now move on to the really fun part, which is to add the gross colour to it. And for this, we're going to be using those contrast paints. And we actually need three. What you need here is some Gulliman flesh, also some Magos purple, and then some contrast medium. And what we're going to do is dilute the colours using the medium, and then we're going to allow them to mix freely on the miniature as we apply them. Now to do this right, the first thing you need to do is to set up the colours first of all, because both of these are a little bit too strong for what we want straight out of the pot. So to begin with, I'm going to use some Gulliman flesh, and I'm using my regiment brush here from the Army Painter. It's just a matter of getting a good dollop of this ready on your palette. So there we go, so two brushfuls for that. And then we want to get ready some Magos Purple as well. I'm going to go for roughly the same amount. So again, two brushfuls. So one, and then two. There we go. So with these, what we need to do now is dilute both of them. So again, we just need to go through the process of doing this one at a time. But uh, roughly 50-50. If in doubt, have more medium than you think you're going to need, because you can always do another coat of this if you want to. Um, so it's easier to do too little and too much. But let's start out with one brush full there, and then another, and then mix those together. So we've got our gullum and flesh mixed there. There we go, that looks about right. So with that prepared, we then need to do the same for Magus Purple. So again, we just need one brush full, and then two. Then mix those together as well, just being careful to keep them apart from each other on the palette. There we go. Right, that looks pretty good to me. So in addition to this, it's also a good idea to have some medium prepared on the palette as well. And because we're going to be kind of mixing the colours as we go along, it's a good idea to have them on the palette rather than the pot, because this way you're not going to be taken directly from the pot, and so there's no chance of contaminating it with any colour. So we'll just get a little bit more of this ready on its own. So it's going to be a bit tricky to see it on the white palette, but trust me, it's there. One, two, a little puddle of contrast medium ready for us. And so there we go. So with that done, we're now ready to start applying this to the model. And like I said, the idea is that we're going to be doing this all at the same time and allowing the colours to mix on the miniature. So to begin with, I'm going to go for some Gulliman flesh. So I just need to load up some of this and then on the skin, so around the belly, we'll go for there. You just need to start applying it like this, just letting it collect mostly in recessed areas, but you see it just adds a bit more depth to the skin tone there, like that. And when you've applied a certain amount, it's time to switch colour. So time to switch over to some Magos purple. And now you'll notice I'm no longer washing my brush. Because I've drawn from the palette, there's no chance of contaminating the pot, so instead we can just go straight from that, and all you do is then paint that on and just let it mix as you go along like that. Draw the other one into it like that, so you get a gradual transition, and there you go, you start to get a really gross skin tone. And well, you can see how easy this is to do, you just play around with it. If you want to, you can then just switch to the regular medium on its own, add some of that, and just blend it out. And this way you can really play around with the colour, and it's really entirely to you how much of this you do. So what I'm going to do now is just carry on applying these colours and letting them mix as I go. And once this first coat's dry, if you want the colour to be stronger, you can always add a second coat in the exact same way. But as you can see, it looks great, it's really disgusting, and it's really fun to do as well. That mix is now dry, and I just want to increase the purple in some areas, especially on things like this tentacle just here. So I've got my Magos Purple and Contrast Medium mix once more, and now I'm just going to apply a second coat. So this time, just on that tentacle, just applied there like that. 
And once I've got a good amount on there and it's coming up to the rest of the belly and I want to fade it into the surrounding area, it's just a matter of getting that contrast medium on its own. And then using this, you just apply it along the end and just let the two mix like that and you see it just blends it into the surrounding area. So you can see doing this is really, really easy and it looks great and it's really fun as well. So just have fun doing this as much as you like. Once you're ready, we can then move on to highlighting it. And with that second coat of contrast now dry, you can see we've got a really unhealthy and grim looking colour scheme to all that flesh. And what we need to do now is just highlight it. And for this, all we need is two colours. First of all, we just need a little bit of flayed one flesh to highlighting all the skin. And then for those pustules, we need to return to Avalanche Sunset. But first we need flayed one flesh and to apply it, I'm going to be using my small airbrush from Citadel. And we just need a small amount of this now. Just thin down a little bit on your palette there like that. And then using this, we just need to start picking out any parts of the skin that really stand out. So this kind of tentacle we've got coming out of his face is a great example. You can see there's kind of a sharper edge running along here. It's just a matter of gently running along that area, just giving it a bit of definition there like that. And then finally, we just need to return to the pustules because that contrast paint is taken away from the yellow a little bit. So we're just going to return to Avalanche Sunset and this time when applying it, just do a small amount in the middle of each one just to show where the skin is the thinnest. And with all those details completed, you could leave the miniature here and, well, base it and then it's ready for the tabletop. But what we're going to do now is do a little bit of weathering on the miniature. And for this, we're going to do something a little bit unusual. For rust effects and for grime, we're going to use some enamel paints and also some weathering pigment. Now, we're going to start out with the enamels. I'm going to use this for some kind of rusty, grimy streaks on the miniature. And the paints we're going to use for this is from AK Interactive. It's this one right here. Rust streaks, really useful one, dead cheap, easy to get a hold of online. And to use it, the best effect, what you'll also need is some white spirit, and you'll see why soon. So I've also got some that again from AK Interactive, so that's what I'm going to use, but there's loads of different sorts out there. Now, if you're going to be using enamel paints, you'll also need to make sure you get some more white spirit or thinners for cleaning your brushes, and that's exactly what I've got here. A third one, this is enamel thinners from Humbrol this time, and the reason why I've got it in this pot is because, well, it's a very different pot from the AK Interactive ones, and for the effect to work, it's important that the white spirit remains clean. So I've got the Humbrol one for washing my brushes, different shape pot, it means I'm not going to get them all mixed up. But to do this, what we need to do is start out with the rust streaks. And so let's begin with some of that. So we just need to open up the pot. And what we're going to do with this is apply it using an old brush. And I have here a detail brush from the Army Painter, an older one. So it's a good idea to have separate older brushes for enamel paints that are different from your acrylic ones so you don't get them mixed up. But to use it, all you've got to do is start out by just getting a small amount on your brush. And you don't need to use a palette for this kind of thing. You just need to get some loaded up on there like that. And then just apply it in areas where water's going to collect and then start doing some rough streaks with it. So for example, if you look at the front of the belly, just for an example, around these rivets is a great place to start. So just apply some of it into that area like that. And then just have some of it just running down roughly like that. Now it's going to look a bit weird at first, but don't worry about it because we are going to return to this and make it look much more realistic. Other areas to do this would be such as on the leg and got some quite open spaces that are good for this. Underneath this bit of trim is a great example because water would collect there if he was in the rain. So just put a little bit underneath there like that to darken it down and then just do a few rough streaks coming down whereabouts we want them to be. So there, for example. Once you've got that grime on there, the next thing to do is to use some white spirit just to thin it a little bit and help make it look a little bit more realistic. And to do this, you just need that white spirit and the same brush cleaned using the thinners. And with this, you just get a small amount of it on your brush there like that. And then first stage is to apply this around these bits of enamel. So for example, if we take a look at the ones we got on this leg just here, what I'm going to do is start out by just running some of this around that area like that. And it just gives it a moment just to start to bite into that enamel paint. And then you'll find all of a sudden you can start moving it. So you can see it's starting to really quite fade into the surrounding area and it gives us a very realistic look. And by just etching away at it and drawing it down, I can make it look more and more realistic, really simply and really easily. And there you go. It gives a really lovely effect and it takes almost no effort. So now it's just a matter of just doing this, taking time going around it. And if you find you don't like any of these streaks, then well, you can use this just to rub it out completely and try again. As you can see, it looks really good and it's really simple to do as well.
And there we are, we now have a really easy to do but really realistic looking grime effect for some rust running down from those rivets and things. And with that done, we can now move on to doing a little bit of pigment as well for some brighter spots of rust. And for this, I've got a pigment from Baleo. I've actually got old rust. Here it is, this one just here, and to fix it down, what you then need is a pigment fixer. What I've got is some from AK Interactive, and that's this one just here. But again, there's loads and loads of different varieties you can use here, so it's entirely up to you what you go for. But to apply the pigment, what you need to do is to go for, again, an older brush and one that's dry. I have an old detail brush once more for this. And you can see I've actually got some in the lid and I'm gonna draw the pigment from that rather than the main part because I just want a small amount here. And all you do is just get some of this onto your brush and then decide whereabouts you'd like to have some bits of this rust on here. And unlike paint, this won't ever dry out and fix. This will keep on moving until you put that fixer on it. So when you first put it on, if you don't like it, you can always remove it if you want to. But what you do is just decide where you might want to have some rust, for example, on the blade of this knife just here, and you just dab it on so you start to get some of that powder appearing there like that. And then you just kind of play around with it until you're happy with the effect. Now this also works well on the armor as well, especially on areas where we've got some other bits of rust too. So you can add little specks of it being brighter in places. So for example, on here, just dab it on there like that and play around with it until you're happy. Once you're happy with the placement of the powder, you're then ready to fix it down because right now you could just wipe that off with your finger. So what you need to do is go for some pigment fixer and what you do, for example, this one that we've got on the forearm just here, you just dab it around the area. So just there and there and just let it soak in. It'll run around on its own and you'll notice it does really darken down that pigment powder. But once it dries, it'll go back to how it was before you applied this. And well, then your plague green is ready to be based. As ever, it's entirely up to you how you base it. But for this one, I'm gonna go for a dark muddy base to really contrast nicely against that pale arm. And here we have the completed Death Guard Plague Marine of the Pallid Hand ready to assault the Imperium. So as you've seen when painting this miniature, a great way of doing the color scheme is to paint the miniature relatively cleanly and then do all the effects at the end. And by doing this, you'll find it's actually a very efficient way of painting large amounts of these troops. So we hope you enjoy it and we'll see you all again very soon.